Uh, with regard, someone asked a question about whether the the crypto is going to be available for other other platforms. The problem is other platforms don't offer the 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 range of cryptos that TradingView do. Uh, I haven't got them on MT4. I don't think I've even got them on MT5, or there might just be one. So of TradingView, that's why that's the advantage of TradingView. Um, it just has so many markets that you can access. Um, hence. You know the reason for just uh, sticking to that one right what i wanted to go back to is this um is this cable one hour cable chart because um if you think about it at, uh, you know when you uh at the beginning of the week or the weekend uh, when you're looking and you know going through your 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 charts and what have you if you have a, a if you've got the Camarilla or any other in, in other way of, of doing this, is by looking at, at the hourly chart, is these levels are going to be, <clears throat> they are just there for you to consider. I mean, this goes, as I said, this is just, just sticking to the hourly chart because the hourly chart is, is my kind of benchmark chart for what happens in the faster time frames. But you could actually think about perhaps using this for um, <clears throat> some sort of slightly, um, uh, staying in for slightly longer, which is all swing trading is. Swing trading is basically staying in longer than, you know, a day trader would. And, you know, the idea is you swing from one level to another. And th this is what really, really caught my eye. And I have to admit, hand on my heart, because I'm always sort of focused on the faster time frames. I don't, you know, I don't pay as much attention as I should to certainly the hourly chart but from now on i will definitely definitely do this because i thought this was just such a good example this level was calculated as i said at the beginning of this week and it's going to be in play for the rest of the week and this i mean you can't miss it the number of times that it has uh, certainly has held in the recent past and it actually goes back to as i said back to the 21st of june and you say well you know what happened uh, this week so if I if I expand the chart up again as you see when you expand it you don't see what's going what's gone on in the past and if I just do this so you look at this this was yesterday this was the move higher uh, with uh, with cable yesterday and it went straight on to as I said here the uh, the, the the third level we have uh, the price going higher, very, really anomalous because you know it's massive candle, not a huge amount of volume underneath it. This is then just classic. You've actually got a shooting star. You've got, um, as you can see, a shooting star. You've got the price going up, bang on the R3, came down with the wick to the top. Look at the volume. It's higher than this one. What time is that? Well, it's actually the. Funny enough, it's that having moaned about the London Open, it was actually the London Open. Surprise, surprise. But it was only when reducing it and looking back, you think, "Ha! Huh, what is the probability that this level that we have here, which has actually also got a five or, or a zero behind it, this is where you are going to find, you know, selling." Uh, uh, um, you know the supply coming in and the price the price to go lower and in fact this is what it has done and where are we now well it almost hit the the s3 not quite it's just it's got a big big wick to the bottom not a huge amount of volume under underneath it but from here to here as i said these two levels doesn't it's not going to work all the time but when you have a level and you've got VPA, um, the VPA signals at the same time, and you've got, you know, historic levels as well. Well, you know, the chance of the probability that that is going to, uh, you know, develop into a really nice move, which it has, and possibly look as though it's coming to certainly a, a significant pause point uh, uh, today. And and as I said, slightly slower time frame. Maybe consider, you know, take your if you've got the quantum tools, take look at the hourly charts. Certainly at the beginning of the week, it's something you have to do at the beginning of the week. Scrunch them up as I as I've done here. I don't think I can scrunch them up in. Can I scrunch them up even further? No, that's that's well, it's even got a it's an important level here as well. And look at this. We've got the R. It's got the R4 under there. See, you know, where is it? Is is it the the key is 
at the beginning of the week, is it looking to, to go and, and perhaps hit it again? And lo and behold, the probability is it will it will reverse, it will do what it will do. And then you've got the, you know, you've got the, the, the CSI will, you know, will also um, uh, come into play as well. And it, the Renko, I know that's the hourly chart and you think, well, what about the Renko? The Renko will actually pick up that a reversal, you know, will give you uh, give you the entry, of course, because the Renko, you know, is, is for the faster time frames, but it will give you, you can still use it for those entries and certainly for uh, uh, those exits. And if you then, does that mean you can't trade the, the, the faster time frames? No, because if we go back to the hourly chart here, and I'll just, ex if I just blow it up a little bit more, I'll take this off. In this candle that we have here, 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 even in the up candles, this is the hourly chart. Would there have been opportunities for, as I said, if you're down in the on the seconds and the and the, and the minute? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. There's absolutely no reason, you know. Why, but I'm just saying that, you know, that for levels and the overall maybe direction, and if you want to move away from the faster time frames, then possibly this is a an approach that you can consider right that's that one uh have you got anything else to say on the on the indices david no oh, what have i got here i've got david was talking about the ym is this the right one uh yes 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 on mt4 we talk about the indices i know you can um uh, there's there's always a cost if you want to trade the the, the futures markets and um, you know uh, co commodity futures generally that you, you have to pay exchange fees and what have you. But with MT4 platforms, they do give you access to these uh, these markets. And as, uh, as David said, certainly with uh, with Globex, I mean it's exactly the same uh, exactly the same principles, exactly the same approach that you would take. You read the volume. Um, you know you have your you have your your multiple time frames. As I said, this is actually the YM at the moment. It's in a congestion phase. It's um, you know where are we going to go? Uh, use the levels again. I mean, I've got these. These are my uh, daily levels for today. As I said, didn't quite get to the S3. Where if this is going to carry on higher? Well, this is certainly going to be an important level on a daily basis. What about the hourly and the weekly levels? Well, let's have a look. I'm going to have to bring this down a bit. It was some way away from from the R3 there, but it's um, it's just at the volume point of control. It's we have where is it? Yes, between the R1 and the S1. Of these two levels we call it like it's like a neutral zone it's like a buffer zone it's there's no firm direction one way or another really it's down to it's really down to sentiment now we have to wait um you know what new york is uh, certainly with wall street uh you know is are these worries that are out there because of the virus and what have you is is that going to topple a uh, topple this market it's also the end of month i mean t tomorrow is the obviously the last day of the month and we go into july and we've got the pmis this is what i said earlier you know the, the data that comes out in the, the forex traders pay attention to we've got the pmis um uh, the, the coming out from china from uh, you know australia new zealand all the all the um you know all uh, the, the g uh, g10 g7 um they are going to have an impact on on what goes on in the equity market and the uh, and, and the indices as well this is how these markets are all connected uh, amongst themselves right i've finished on my mt4 platform do you want to say something else have you got something else there can I just go on straight onto stocks okay i've said let's have a look here i've got what have i got here <clears throat> Let's have a look. Oh, this is my this is my Bitcoin chart that I've actually got. I'm just using the free version, and I haven't uh, cited. Uh, David has the has the paid version over there. He's got the developing the developers platform. I'm just a bit of a cheapskate at the moment. <laughs> this is uh, this is the uh, the daily, as I said, uh, the Bitcoin chart, and again looking at looking at uh, VPA and this is what we wrote this was this really nice hammer candle that came in lots of buying off this level the key to this chart 
we haven't talked about volatility um, too much this time, but when you get a volatility candle that you see here on the slower time frames, with this widespread, I know with Bitcoin you have a huge, you know, this big range in 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 the price anyway. It's got a, a massive wick underneath it, massive volume. Now that, that markets have reversed off things like that on a, what we call a V-shaped reversal. But what tends to happen where you have had this volatility, this this momentum, this this compression of time within this candle, one of two things. You either do get a reversal or you get this um, moving into congestion. And this is what has been happening with Bitcoin. We've got the volume point of control down here. We've got I've got my level. I've got my my uh, Camarilla levels as well. Um, this was quite um this was quite a night. This just had another little hammer candle. Again, decent amount of volume underneath it, and uh, that was, you know, quite, uh, you know, quite encouraging. That's all you could say it was encouraging. Remembering we're in a congestion. We're around the volume point of control. The volume, a nice way of describing the volume point of control. It's come. It's based on market profile. Market is in equilibrium, and it's balanced. It's there's no, you know, it's happy to transact around it within a range around as i said the volume point of control trends happen when that equilibrium is disturbed so you get the push in one direction or another but when the market is like this unless this is the daily chart unless you're down at the seconds and the one minute and you're just looking to take scalps fine but you do have to be aware that the risk of taking those trades is going to be greater than if this was in a strong trend. If this was in a strong trend lower and a strength, strong trend higher, the risk on that trade is going to be less. But this, this is just a general thing about Bitcoin. So that came in, which was encouraging, but there's no follow through. Why is there no follow through? Well, we have two up candles. First of all, it hits the volume point of control, but look at the volume underneath it. It actually falls away. Then you get some, you know, some selling uh, coming in, maybe people throwing in the towel. Who knows? You have another candle here with a decent amount of volume pushes up. I can't see this because um, I'm not sure whether there's even a gap there. Um, I can't seem to get to the bottom of, of there may have even been a slight gap up. But again, it's gone straight into, you know, these res, these levels of support and resistance, you know, they are on Ninja, the, the, the indicator we have for Ninja, like the lines actually get thicker and thicker. So it becomes you can see the strength building in them and you think, oh, my goodness. And on trading and on trading view as well, we were able because of the soft because of the code that comes with the platforms, we can you can actually see a level get thicker and thicker, and you say, oh my goodness, this is going to take you know a, a nuclear bomb underneath it to actually get through, and the nuclear bomb is the volume. So it's gone straight into the uh, the volume point of control. So for Bitcoin investors at the moment, the thing is, it's going to be patience. And, you know, first of all, it's got to get beyond the, the VPOC with lots of volume. And then it's got to get through these levels that we have here. But the key level is the top of the uh, of the volatility candle that we that we see here. That is the that is the key level. And, you know, the trend higher if that is going to carry on. Right. So that's what I've got to say about Bitcoin. And there's a question down there. Let's have a look. Um, <clears throat> I'm just starting to trade uh, the fundamental insight. Look at when trading the US 30. All right. Uh, okay. Um, partly I've answered it in 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 the thing that the releases that come out that the forex traders get to know. We look at the PMIs. We look at uh, well, there's a whole raft of them that you see on Forex Factory. Uh, don't let the name put you off. <laughs> forex Factory Trading Economics. Th those releases. Are going to be taken up by all by all traders, as I said, whether you trade uh, stocks or whether you trade uh, the indices. Now, at the moment, we have the inflation narrative, and it's it's a question of getting to know the stock that you are trading. What what is going to impact that stock in terms of 
um, the outside uh, uh, in, uh, outside releases. For example, does it's the stock that you are thinking of trading? What would happen to it if inf if uh, inflation if interest rates went to five percent? Now, is it a growth? In other words, is it a growth stock? Is it more of is it a defensive stock? Is it a um, is it this is on stock? Is it a um, is it a, a, a value stock, as, as it were? So that's that's on stocks. I think you asked about in indices. Indices, again, the the if you are trading the Nasdaq, the Nasdaq is te tech, is basically tech, and the same applies. What makes up the Nasdaq? Which what stocks make up the Nasdaq? You you would find that out. What's also important with indices is the movement of the index how is that index configured is it equal are all the stocks there based on on, on uh, market cap is it uh, are they ranked on market cap so if it's on market cap you would want to know uh, what are the advanced what are called the advances and decliners we haven't actually touched on it in this session because we've been a, it's all right well, we've done a lot of things today but when we do uh, some stock sessions further on we're going to look, we look at the advances and decliners in more detail yeah. um, and so that tells you whether the move in the overall index is is actually a genuine move or not and the volume will confirm that as well I think I read somewhere that in um, at one point in the Nasdaq, is it the S I can't remember if it's the S&P or the Nasdaq, the actual move in the index was down to something like four stocks. That because there were such big moves in those four stocks, it kind of pulled all the the index as well. So you have to do a little bit of uh, sort of research behind it. Looking at the Russell, I had the Russell 2000. We now look at four indices we've got the Dow the the Nasdaq the S&P and uh, and and uh, the Russell the Russell is being reconfigured at the moment the uh, stocks are being taken out and move up to the, I think the Russell 1000 to the, the big caps a couple of them are kind of the Mimi stocks that have been uh, traded very heavily by um, you know the uh, the Reddit and the Wall Street uh, bets guys. So that there's there's a lot of background that you need to do that you can do. Some of it applies and there's that applies both to individual stocks but also to indices as well. What forex also does for you. This is again and we haven't talked about bonds and bond yields as well. Is what the forex does is if you keep an eye on those currencies that represent sentiment, that represent market mood, market sentiment, that will also feed into what you're, you're, you're trading on a daily basis. So I hope that answers um, that. And what I can do, yes, mostly tech. Okay, research. It's a big question. I'll, I'll try and get it all for, for next time. But the reason I want to come over to um, uh, the uh, my stock uh, window as it were and this is what we do when we just focus on stocks and if you come along to the next session I'll I'll, I'll bring up some more uh, um, I'll put it all uh, together um, rather than try and do it now because I'm I just want to go back and look at a couple of stocks that we have featured in previous webinars one of them is this one it's BTX which is let's have a look if it brings up again Brooklyn immunotherapeutics and again what we did last time is it last week or the week before I can't remember basically we called them I called them we call them fallen angels and this particular stock is really really interesting because here we are this is this is Finviz which this is these are free sites by the way Finviz and it's got a screener it's got a lovely I call bubbles. So my bubbles still here. I always have to show them over my bubbles. It's got this wonderful filtering system using using bubbles. So you, you can have lots of great fun with them. But the reason I liked BTX was this. This stock was in a mat. This is a biotech. Here we are. Healthcare biotech. Biotech is by virtue of its sector is going to be more volatile and you will find them in the Russell, a lot of biotechs, in, mostly in the Russell 2000. So, and these, the Russell 2000 is an index where people are looking for the next Apple. They're looking for the next 
big thing. That's where they all start. They usually start life in 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 the in somewhere like the, uh, the 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 Russell, and that's what you know everyone wants to try and find. As I said, the next Amazon, the next Facebook, and what have you. You can see this massively long. Uh, congestion phase and you can just about see the buying under these but didn't really go very far and this is this is actually a fantastic pattern um, so this this sort of elongated saucer doesn't go very far because at some point with this uh, with this uh, with a stock you know it is going to go uh, it is going to take off now we had we had this little, uh, we had this attempt to break out here. We've got actually got a wick to the top and a little bit of wick to the bottom, massive volume underneath it, but it didn't actually collapse, which is actually quite interesting. So it's a bit anomalous. And then you had the ex the explosion. And this is what happens. This is a, almost a classic pump and dump. So you had this kind of long period of accumulate, well, February to, to April. We call it an accumulation phase. So it's being bought. Then you want to push it higher. So you have some fantastic news coming out in, in the market. Everybody jumps, up, jumps on it. If you think about it, it's $7, $10. You've got good volume underneath it. It goes up and up. Um, then you've got this count, this big, big candle here with a wick to the bottom. You've got as much volume here as you've got under this. There's clearly some buying there. It goes from 10, it goes to 50. Then you've got, looks like this massive tail at the bottom of this candle. It's like a skyrocket. Look at it. Up it goes, up, 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 up to $80. Look at the volume underneath it. Just look at it. But what is the emotion? behind this price move. So maybe this is a stock that you've been watching for I don't know how, how long and you think, oh, well, this looks interesting because you understand about accumulation phases and you understand about, um, you know, these things take time to develop. Yes, it's a volatility. It's a very volatile sector, but, you know, it's not, not, ma not massive. You know, where's the volatility? No, it's nice and steady. Then you see this and then you see this sky, you see this rocket, this uh, rocket here with no volume underneath it. But by this time, how many people do you think have been piling in into this? How many traders and investors have been, you know, piling in because it's going to the moon? It's gone from 10 to 80. This is amazing. This is fantastic. But look at the volume. And then suddenly, bang, 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 bang. But what's interesting about it is in the fall lower, look at the volume underneath it. It's, you know, it's it's really not, it's more, it, it, it's really more to uh, it shake people out through fear to get them, you know, get them to sell out. You've got a bunch of people now up there stuck because they said, well, you know, they've been sucked in with FOMO and, and heaven knows what else. Now it's come back. So, so, so I call this fall and it was more like Icarus, I suppose, up to the up to the sun, gets its wings burnt and down it comes. Now, it's kind of gone into another sort of period of accumulation. You've got some you've got some, you know, some decent volume under some of the candles some buying. You've got a little bit of a pullback. And it was just one that I said, just keep an eye out, see what's happening. Now, what tends to happen now is because there are bag holders up here, there are people here who said, well, you know, I'm just going to wait till it gets back, until it gets to the thing. I will guarantee you, if it's going to go higher, it's going to struggle because every time it reaches a level where there have people that says, oh, I'm out, I'm out, that's it, you know, because I haven't, you know, so grateful to have maybe broken even on that. That said, it is still an interest, and I'm really looking at it to see how the psychology that has behind the price action and how the VPA is going to play out. And I'm really going to keep an eye on it and see what see what's uh, see what's going on. With with Finviz, you've also got the kind of volumes that are going on behind uh, these the the moves. Um, then it's got the sort of you've got the history and then what I tend to do I then move it to market beat and in market beat you've got more of a background and I think today I have a feeling in fact I looked at it today I think it's got earnings today so let's have a look I have a feeling we've got earnings it's estimated yes we've got earnings today so everything I have said has to be taken in the context of earnings because obviously with stocks that is always going to be a huge factor into um, you know what may or may not happen with the with the price action. You could see a gap down, you could see a huge gap up, 
uh, you just have to look at the volumes. Uh, the nice thing about Market Beat is it's got the um, um, it's got the headlines. It's quite interesting. It was uh, was it uh, on the 23rd? It was up 5.2. On the 24th, it was down 4.5. So I suppose you could say it was up 1. Point, whatever 1.3 overall. But it's got its profile. You've got the inside trades. You've got the institutional ownership. Um, I don't know how up to date this is, but you know, are the institutions buying it? Well, they were certainly buying it over here, uh, 104 million. That was back in uh, uh, 2019. Um, yeah, so it's all it's all that sort of stuff. And again, the chart. Again, looking at the volume, you've got here. You've got buying under here. It's certainly got buying under there and it goes back into this sort of this lovely this what you lovely sort of saucer shape some people call it like a like a, a cut and saucer don't they david yeah. that's the sort of saucer shape but we do have volume we do have earnings today possibly estimated and we'll see what happens so i hope that answers i will as i said with regards to the indices we will um uh andrew no in the, let's have a look why are some of the I know Cadre's relationship with it um, because they're risk currencies. Auss Aussie and uh, Aussie and New Zealand are um, they are currencies. Currencies are risk assets. They 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 are tied to whether the economy is doing well or not. So that's why we look at the risk currencies and also uh, what the safe haven. But it is actually all explained in our forex program, which I know is has the word forex in there but we do have a lot of stock and index traders who have taken the program simply to find out that kind of um that kind of information and to learn more about the psychology behind the price action that's something we talk about no one else talks about it um, this is that's kind of behavioral uh and behavioral you know trader and investor behavior if you understand bpa and if you understand how the markets all interconnect with each other you will understand the, the psychology behind the price action will be revealed to you that's all i can say as i said when we um uh, you know when we go back to doing more specialized webinars then i will uh, put together some uh, some free resources it is you know it's it's not complicated but it is complex and you have to sort of you know understand how these uh, you know where these relationships are and how the, uh, the the market sort of feed off each other as it were but ultimately markets about as david as we say it's about money flow you know traders and investors are happy to put their money into riskier assets for greater rewards and when market conditions change that they are not they're not so comfortable taking risk they will move into what are called safe haven assets now that's a that seems that's very binary but there's a mass in the middle you know there is a spectrum of a sentiment and there is a spectrum of risk and as david said you know sometimes it's not clear cut you know correlations and 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 relationships they do break down they break down for uh, uh, you know for various reasons and then they come back into into sync as it were right is there anything you want to say to that i hope that helps yes. right i will just pass back to you then is that okay yeah i'm just going to pass back to david and i'm going to say thank you so much for coming along i know it's been a very long session i think i'm going to chop this up into two videos anyway and the recording will be up on youtube later Thanks, darling. Hopefully you can see my screen. Just to uh, very quickly wrap up where everything is. This is the Forex program that Anna mentioned. And as she said, we do actually have a lot of stock traders on this now, believe it or not, because um, a lot of what you learn here is common to both trading and it's common to uh, various instruments simply because the forex market sits at the heart of everything the forex market is the the gateway through which cash flows because when you transfer from one asset to another 
you have to move to cash at some point and therefore that means currency exchange and that's why the forex market is the kingpin it's the absolute hub around which all the others rotate and therefore it's key to understanding it's why we put it at the center of the education program because that tells you what is going on in all other markets because they are all connected through the prism of forex it's all there it's a huge program covers psychology of trading the fundamental analysis in detail, as Anna said, you know, it that relates to whether you're trading stocks, whether you're trading forex, it's all related. Big module on, you know, central banks, the policies, the decision making, everything else. There are 13 PDF downloads that go with the program as well. Um, and I think in total, there are something like 450 lessons and something like 200 to 300 hours. Huge deep dive into VPA, as you would expect in the relational analysis module. Uh, sorry, in the technical analysis module, relational analysis about how the markets, no, you know, nothing operates in a vacuum. The mechanics of trading, you know, how do you trade? What, are the, what is the right way to trade? We don't say which is right or wrong, but we lay it all out so you understand and, and choose what suits you as a trader and your particular tactical approach to the markets. Topic webinars, webinar library, pulling it all together, how to use the indicators, of course, and massive uh, VPA chart examples in there as well. So it's all there. And we bolted on the funded Forex program as well. Um, gives you the option to trade our money right the way from $5,000 through to 2 million. Uh, it's a no risk to you uh, because you're trading our money. It is very much geared around Forex. Uh, the, the levels you start at are the evaluation levels. You can start at $5,000, $10,000 or $15,000. There is an entry cost. Once you're in there, that's it. That's all you pay. You can't lose any more than that. That's it. Um, it's our money, as I say. You're trading our money, not yours. On these levels, it's uh, spot Forex. You're trading the 28 pairs primarily. Uh, you set a target, a, a very achievable profit target, percentage-based profit target. You get a percentage of that kickback in, in to you personally as a lump sum once you've achieved that particular level of 35%. And then thereafter, you move up onto the next levels. We multiply these by four. So if you start on 15,000, you move up to 60,000. On the 60,000 level, two things change. First of all, you can uh, trade additional markets. You've got the indices here and also gold. Um, and in addition to that, we increase the, the profit percentage back to you, it comes back to 50%, and we pay that on a monthly basis. So you're starting to earn a monthly return on your trading activities, which is really nice. And that goes all the way up to 2 million. And once you get to 60,000, once you get to the next level, what we call portfolio manager level, we double everything. So if you go from 15 to 60, just to use that example, from 60, you go to 120, 244, 80 through to 960 up to the million and up to the two million. The other thing that changes once you become a million dollar trader with us, you earn at 60% rebate. And again, that is also paid monthly. It's a fantastic program. We've got a lot of traders on it, working their way through, on up through the various levels. And the reason we put it in place was to give our students, this is not available to people who are not on the student program. It's only available to students of QT uh, program, uh, was to give our students the opportunity to to put their knowledge into uh, a return in terms of trading larger size accounts and also give them the experience of trading large large money accounts also. So it's all there. This is where you'll find all the indicators over at quantumtrading.com, MT45, that's a single license, you choose, we don't, it's up to you if you wanna use MT4 or MT5, both are covered and you can change between the two whenever you feel like it. Ninja Trader 7, 8, exactly the same. You can trade either on 7 or 8. You choose single license. Trading View, wonderful. It's on uh, the browser base, so you pretty much run on any device you care to name with our indicators and TradeStation. Two versions of TradeStation. The one you saw today is the one with uh, interactive brokers. That's 9.5, TradeStation Global. And then there is the TradeStation 10 and above, which runs with the TradeStation Securities Data Feed, TSS. Um, which is the traditional trade station uh, application, charting application with their data feed. And you've got up to a thousand cells on radar screen, immensely powerful. It's fantastic. It's a wonderful charting application package. Uh, as you've seen, uh, new indicators coming along all the time, upgrades uh, uh, on the existing as well all the time. Also, if you buy just one indicator from us, you can always upgrade to something at a later stage. You get a full credit for it. So if you buy one indicator and you want to upgrade to a package or 
you want to upgrade to an education program, whatever it is, you get credit for that um, always. So you never, ever lose out. And you can also swap from one platform to another. So if you start an MT45, for example, you can port your indicators over to Ninja Trade or Trading View or TradeStation at the same price. We don't charge you for that. Some companies do. It's outrageous, personally, I think. Uh, we don't charge you anything for that. You can transfer from one platform to another at zero cost. If you want to move a complete package set, if you have, say, MT4.5 and you want to go Ninja Trader, the only difference you pay is if there are more indicators because there are differences in prices on the platform because there is greater functionality. Um, for example, on Ninja Trader, we have, uh, trade st uh, we have Tick Speedometer, which is not available on MT4.5. So that's where you'll find all the indicators. And finally, just on Anna's site, this is where you'll find all the books, uh, all up on Amazon, the Kindle and paperback versions and all the links to the various sites there. The box sets here as well. You can find all them there as well. And also all the analysis we do down here are across the various markets, uh, which goes all over the place. I'm delighted to say also that um, FX Empire, who you may be familiar with, have also uh, decided to take uh, Anna's analysis too. So she'll be appearing on investing.com and also FX Empire this week. That's it. We're done. Sorry, gone a long way over time. In fact, double the time. Um, hope you've enjoyed today. Hope you found it useful. Hope you've perhaps learned something you didn't know before. And we will be back next week with uh, more webinars. If you're on the list, you will receive all the details. So thank you very much indeed for coming along today. Enjoy the rest of the trading session. Enjoy the rest of the trading week. Stay safe and we will see you soon. Bye for now.